to what this is all about. Isn't that nice? Introduction to statistics. You can find the link to this little story also in the CampusNet uh, site. I like to start here, even though uh, probably none of you are going to be medical doctors, and also I'm not a medical doctor myself. But I just find personally that the whole uh, health science area and uh, it's a pretty central one for all of us. Uh, we all of us get in touch on a very personal way, in a very personal way with the health authorities, doctors and all, with our own health and the health of our family and uh, loved ones. So this whole area of medicine is a good place to start, even though you're engineers. Some of you might also be medicine and technology type engineer. So there are links there, of course. Others of you might become statisticians, like me, and then go work with the uh, pharmaceutical industry. But uh, let's get back to that. Back around the millennium, most of the uh, number of well-known uh, people in the medical research area, they sat down and tried to agree on what were the what was the millennium list of achieve achievements in medical research? So we talk millennium here, right? 1,000 years. Where were we 1,000 years ago? Vikings running around, running on charcoal. If you get burned, you were a witch and you got killed. Uh, that was the level of uh, health uh, science at that time. Um, what happened over 1,000 years then? Well, 11 things happened. 11 things happened. We discovered cells. We discovered chemistry of life. We discovered the immune system. Blah, 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 blah. And we discovered application of statistics within the medical area is on this list. Which is why I'm sharing it with you, of course to make you realize that what we're starting here is a pretty central thing, even though you may never have thought of that. <coughs> Not only for the medical area, but this is how the medical science area is viewing it. So uh, why is that, for instance? A couple of historical landmarks, which maintained to be of core sort of uh, points of what's going on today still, both in business as in science. 250 years ago, uh, the Europeans had a lot of uh, boats si sailing around with a lot of sailors and a lot of people dying, and getting ill for scurvy, due to scurvy, right? And we didn't know, they didn't know what was going on. They didn't know the mechanisms, they didn't know what was going on there, until a guy called James Lind made the first so-called clinical trial which is a planned and designed experiment where you take some patients and treat them with a potential treatment, comparing them with other patients that do not get the treatment, that get only a placebo, for instance, and then you compare. How do you compare? You look at the numbers somehow. You look at, you either measure how well are they, or you count how many are alive. That's also a measure. So 12 alive running around in the mass and everything in the treatment group, hey, this, uh, this uh, cider thing seemed to be a good idea. And the other guys who didn't get the cider, psh, over the side, right? That's a pretty clear. If you take 12 patients and give them cider, compared to all the 12 patients, you don't give them cider. The 12 cider patients, they are up and running. The 12 other guys, they are dead. I think we've learned something then, by the numbers, right? Even without knowing what's going on. We had the numbers and the statistics would have told us cider is a damn good idea to prevent this stuff, right? This is still going on today, again and again. None of our companies, Novo Nordisk, Lundbeck, other companies, will ever be allowed or approved with any drugs on the market without having conducted large-scale clinical studies following the same principles as James Lind was doing, having some patients getting the treatment, others patients don't getting the treatment, comparing, documented, documenting that it works. 
Even though, of course, we have much more knowledge now about the mechanisms, there's a lot of things we still don't know. It's a, the, the human uh, system is a pretty complicated thing. And even if we think we know, we still need to prove that our drugs work if we're a, a pharmaceutical company. It's not enough just to claim that our pharmaceutical guys say that it works. You have to prove it. Now, so that's a pretty neat historical landmark. Another historical landmark for a different type of statistics and a different type of data, still relevant. That's a guy called John Snow. He looked at, uh, he was interested in uh, incidences of cholera in London. Right back then, we, they didn't know what was going on again. Maybe it was something flying through the air. We didn't know where it, come from, where it came from. So epidemiology is the study of the presence and development of diseases in our population. So it's a bit different from having such a planned uh, clinical trial where you test something. It's investigating the whole population. And I believe that you can go, I'm not going to bore you with all the details, so you can still go watch the pump in London. Actually, I've never seen it myself. I should do it next time I go. Um, anyone seen it? Very good. You get a plus here in my little book here. Um, it's still pretty important for us to be able to monitor and know about the spread of disease in populations, be it human populations or be it animal populations. I mean, you probably have to be pretty good at this to prevent that something like Ebola or something else will basically destroy our race at some point. So these were two historical landmarks with things that are still going on, right? And the reason why statistics is so important is it's all about numbers. Maybe I was a bit fast on the pump story there, but basically he was looking at the incidences. And then he did something which in epidemiology is called an intervention study. He did, at least the story tells, I think if you dig into it, probably the story is a little bit better than what actually happened, but nevertheless, it's a story. He went out in the night and he removed the handle from one of these, uh, from, from this pump, and then he could see immediately how the numbers decreased, right? So he used data analysis and uh, thorough uh, looking at the outcome and the, and the numbers to convince himself it's, it's the water, right? This, this is where we have the, the problem. So we learn from this. We learn by doing data analysis and in a structured way we learn about nature, and then we can try to understand afterwards. My point is, there are still so many things not known to us, so it's, uh, we have to continue that if we want to survive in a good way. More modern thing, actually, the whole big data. How many of you had the term big data? A few more than having visited the pump, the, the pump there, that's good. Uh, big data is a, is a big word these days. Um, what it, what it actually refers to might be more blurry, but of course it somehow refers to something about big data. Um, it could be looking into our internet data for some reasons. Uh, what Google is doing or other companies are doing to be able to filter out things for us and suggest good ideas for the books that we particularly like such filterings uh, are based on brute force data analysis. A data analysis is what I'm going to start teaching on this course, right? That's part of statistics to do data analysis of big data sets. There was a quote here. It's a pretty old quote by now, actually. Let's uh, do it like this. This is a pretty sexy thing to be, uh, let me not uh, try to uh, elaborate on that one, but, uh, but anyway, it's, uh, it has proven correctly that the demand for people knowing about this is increasing. So if you want to be sure to have a job in the future, go, go this way. And then actually later on, Pultikin also realized something, uh, five years later, they also suddenly realized about big data. 
Let me see. Here's a quote from Politiken there. Let me not read it. You can read it yourself. Let me instead, that's just uh, as a finishing of this uh, sort of, it was a big uh, waving kind of perspective. Uh, look at statistics. It's fantastic kind of talk. Um, look at those case stories that I'm having for you. I have three stories. And I'm just going to introduce them to you, and then you can go look at those stories yourself. That's the idea now. I'm going to introduce three small stories for you. Story by senior scientist Hanna Refsko on Novo Nordisk. She was studying chemistry here at DTU, so she has a degree in chemistry from DTU, now working with Novo Nordisk collaborating with me on different developments in the discovery end of medical development at Novo Nordisk. Do, do the discovery end, that's where they are trying to find out the new molecules to, to use later. The molecules that they then, 10 years later, will put into a clinical trial to f do the final test to get them approved on the market, right? Anyway, there is uh, something more related to the computer, big data, Google kind of thing. Um, nice story. And then there's a little story, if you want, about the sort of ecological modeling thing that could be a start of your project work because if you want, this uh, Skiva Fjord data is one of the optional uh, projects that you can work with. Uh, it's not the only one. I was going to show you how, where they are, if we can find it again. See? Waiting. Here we are. Thank you, Internet. I have those three stories out here. I'm not going to start them now, but just to show you, you can dig into the stories. The Novo Nordisk is uh, just a slide presentation for, for various reasons. You will see how Hannah is talking, showing us that how statistics maintain, statistics for small data sets, if you want, maintain to be important for Novo Nordisk because some of their data sets and some of the developments they do are very, very expensive. Uh, so, they are still worried about good statistics for small data sets. You will also see at the end of her presentation, actually, uh, the name of a PhD project that we are running right now. So that's the current research project in this borderline area between medical development and statistics and data analysis. We have a young, clever guy who actually studied at the Pharmaceutical University or now Copenhagen University, then specialized in data analysis. So you can do similar things, having some good input with some uh, background somewhere else and then go towards data analysis if you want. Now he is working in a mix between small data sets and big data sets in Novo Nordisk because big data sets is also relevant when you, like a company like Novo, when you're going to dig out the right molecule among all those millions of possible molecules out there that you could use. When you're going to build that right blockbuster molecule for you, you have a big data set potentially to go work with and look into. And that's part of the, that's part of the way to screen for the right molecules. Uh, anyway, that's, I could keep on. I shouldn't keep on with that. That's very interesting. The ski with short, go have a look. And then this, um, let me just have a look at the slides. They are very nice. We had a visit by this IBM person talking to us about sort of classical now internet-based big data analysis, so-called social media analytics, also as a perspective to where this could all lead for you. It's a way to go look at internet data, and I say you can look at it yourself, see the, see the slide, but for instance, to uh, some of the last slides, uh, it comes uh, how to, if you're a company, for instance, a car company, how to listen to the social media for in your product development work in a company. That's kind of a, a way that companies actually use social media type analysis. That's all data analysis. 
that you will start now, right? So it's just waiting for you out there. Anyway, this was this uh, sort of uh, waving with the big arms about what is statistics. Hopefully, just hopefully, it made you feel a bit motivated. If you think it was too, uh, too wild in a way, then uh, don't worry, we'll get less wild and more specific, just in a second. So, Georgi, we move.